know the vibe, we outside. So what's going on everybody? So as you guys can tell, I'm sitting in the Jag. Now this is going to be a little bit of a short video. I just want to go real quick over the fuel pump uh, method or the fuel pump change on these cars that are normally known to go bad. So I just want to share some uh, knowledge real quick on my Jag and experience on the fuel pump. So without any questions, let's just get right into it. What's going on you guys? So real quick before I show you guys anything, let me just go ahead and quickly explain to you guys what I, what's really going on with the Jag. So as you guys uh, may have known or may have not known, uh, I actually did a fuel pump change on the Jaguar. Uh, the fuel pumps died, so I had taken it to a shop a long time ago, or you know, a few months ago, and we changed out uh, the fuel pumps that were in there. The fuel pumps that were in there were Delphi pumps, so somebody had put in Delphi pumps instead of original pumps. Whenever you change the fuel pumps on these cars, you gotta put original in there. Um, even the dealership recommends it, or the service department recommends it. I even called them up and asked them about it, and they said uh, we recommend you run original and uh, don't run any aftermarket ones. Not because the aftermarket ones are no good. It's just because that these cars do recommend the or do run perfect on the original uh, fuel pumps from Jaguar. So it was not knocking the uh, aftermarket ones. All the aftermarket ones do work well, but not. Uh, for these uh, particular vehicles like the Jaguar so I went ahead and I took the car to the shop because it wasn't starting we ended up pulling the fuel tank out uh, pulling the fuel pumps out pulling all the lines inside the tank out uh, basically removing the line underneath which actually got bent and I had to actually uh, it changed uh, I had to find one use uh, on Jag bits and I had to get it shipped to the shop so um, you know, I was very lucky, I would say, very fortunate that we did, in fact, actually uh, do the fuel pump change by taking the tank out. If I would have done it any other way, I probably wouldn't have been able to actually fix everything that was in the tank, including changing the fuel lines or the uh, fuel lines that sit in the fuel tank, changing out that uh, bent uh, fuel pressure line coming, uh, I think, off the fuel filter into the tank. And changing the fuel pumps so in other words I wouldn't been able to do it right and fix whatever else may have gone bad in the fuel uh, pump or fuel tank area I would say so basically we took it to the shop that we changed everything including the fuel pumps they've got new screens uh, brand new fuel pumps basically from Jaguar uh, brand new uh, screens or filters whatever you want to call them that fit the original fuel pumps from Jaguar we changed all the hoses inside because the original ones were stretched or cracked and uh, we knew we used a uh, new submersible uh, fuel uh, tank hose or fuel pump hose in other words uh, uh, it's basically a hose that's meant to sit in submersible fuel so I actually ordered it from Amazon it's gate submersible fuel line hose so we changed them out uh, we used brand new clamps hose clamps and then uh, we changed the line underneath I was bent because we were trying to pull the tank out we actually kind of bend it so we had to get one used from Jack Bits was kind of expensive because they're, they're the only ones that you can find it from so we did that we put everything back in and uh, probably like a few months down the road a few months down uh, the line I uh, actually noticed something wasn't right because when I left from the, the uh, shop the car was making a humming noise in the back and it didn't sound like the normal humming noise you get when the uh, fuel pumps are actually running right so you know, I started questioning something wasn't really right or maybe we didn't do something uh, or change something. So, you know, a few months down the line, the car eventually died out on us or died out on me. Uh, when I was uh, driving down the street, it got, uh, I guess, got very hot and it shut off on me. So I immediately came to the conclusion after doing a little bit of research on the forums and also, you know, just, uh, just having general experience on these cars, I was able to figure out that the fuel uh, uh, wiring harness to the pumps were actually bad. So my, uh, from my personal experience or from what I read on the forums, they said if you ever do a fuel pump change, you must change the fuel pump wiring harness. It's the ones that go from the, on top of the fuel pumps to the to the connector underneath the, um, the or the connector that's on top of the fuel tank so if you if you use a hammer and you open the uh, ring you'll see that they connect underneath so uh, you have to change them out I didn't know that and I think the reason what happened was my Jaguar is the guy put uh, aftermarket pumps and those aftermarket pumps probably fried the um, 
uh, fuel pump uh, wiring harness and they also had uh, cuts in them so uh, whenever you do a fuel pump change it doesn't hurt to change the fuel pump wiring uh, harness out the fuel pump wiring harness out just to make sure that you don't have any issues later down the line uh, you know spend the money this way you don't have to run into any issues down the line I didn't know that um, you're not technically supposed to if the, if the fuel pump wiring harnesses are working but just to be safe uh, if you're doing a fuel pump change, you might, you might as well change those wiring harnesses out. They don't, it doesn't hurt the car, you're just saving yourself the hassle of, that, of something going bad down the line. In my opinion, uh, I should have done it, I didn't know that, so I ended up having to actually uh, replace those, and uh, that's where I want to lead into, so that's why you see the seats are out. So I basically had to do it the smart way because I didn't want to go and take the car back to the shop and have them take the tank out for such a small thing so what I did is that's where I went ahead and actually took the back seat so before I you know show uh, say anything let me show you guys and then this way you guys get an idea I actually had to cut the rear deck um, and make a square cut almost like uh, cutting a fuel trap door and like let's say for example a Camaro or, uh, or a truck bed where you cut the uh, certain panel of the frame and lift it up in order to get access to it. That's what I did. So let me bring the camera in. I mean, let me bring the camera in. Let me show you guys, and hopefully you guys can use this method. If you guys do need to change the fuel pump or change the wires out, you don't have to do it by taking the tank out. I already took the tank out, so everything in the tank was good. So there was no real need for me to actually go ahead and pull the tank out again and go through this whole hassle. So I decided, let me cut the trap door on the back, on the rear deck stick my hand in there which is pretty skinny unplug them and put new ones in and uh, yeah so let me bring the camera in I'll show you guys and you guys will get a better idea all right guys so as you guys can tell this is exactly what I did or this is what you want to do if you plan on changing uh, anything in the fuel tank such as the fuel pump or the fuel pump wiring harness or whatever it is in my case I actually had changed a lot of stuff in the fuel tank prior and there was no need for me to pull the tank again just to change the wiring harness which I should have done uh, when I first took the car to the shop you should have changed the fuel pump wiring harness then but I didn't know that you should have to or should change them uh, whenever you do a fuel pump change just to make sure that the wiring harnesses are working mine had a cut in them and I believe uh, they were getting hot and shutting the car off so needed to change them but anyways this is how it looks um, put two screws here there's a bracket or a plate underneath it and then uh, same thing on this side now the uh, measurement from here to here is about five and a half and then the long way that way is about 10 inches so this is where I basically did the uh, cut in order to get the fuel pump wiring harness out so if you guys need to do it definitely consider doing it this way I was able to get my hand in there and then change them out and just put in a little bit of silicone. It's not the cleanest, doesn't bother me. I'm just gonna cover this up, but it's nice and sturdy. But it saved me from having to take it to the shop again just to change something small out, which I should have done in the beginning. But you live and you learn. And I uh, just wanted to share something with you guys. So if you guys do run into something like this, you guys definitely know what to do. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys can hear. Uh, please ignore the fan in the background. Kind of, Kind of warm today, so. That's why the fan is on the garage is kind of kind of warm but these are the fuel pump wiring harnesses here the part number you need is n l i mean excuse me l n c three three six zero c a so right there that's what you need right there fuel pump wiring harness so basically what i did is i ordered these from parts geek so i ordered them from parts geek and unfortunately when you look at their website they have uh, two fuel pump wiring harnesses and from what I mean by that is you'll notice on their website They sell one that has a white connector and then uh, The back of it is actually black. So both of them have a black connector on the end And then one of them on one side has a white connector and the other one they sell has a blue connector. So basically For example this one here uh, Obviously you can tell that there's nothing on the ends of this uh, This one for example would be the one that has the same same type of connector like this similar like this but over here would be a blue color connector so similar connectors like this white one you see here but with a blue one here and uh, they sell both of them so you need actually both of them so you need one white and one blue so 
when I went and ordered them uh, a few weeks ago, they didn't have the one in blue in stock. They only had a uh, white one, and I think they had two white ones in order. So what I did was I basically ordered uh, two white cables like this. And what I ended up doing was when I removed the fuel pump wiring harness out of the uh, tank using the trapdoor method, what I did was I, I used uh, basically uh, the old uh, uh, fuel pump wiring harness had the blue color connector on one end. So what I basically did was I basically used a de-pinning tool. So I bought this de-pinning tool on Amazon right here and I was able to use the correct key and just basically pull the uh, pin off of the new wiring harness which had a white connector pull that off and then I was able to pull the blue color connector off the original wiring harness and just put it back on the new one uh, on the new wiring harness that I got from uh, Parts Geek and I was able to just plug uh, basically this whole wiring harness into the car and then plug this one into the car so basically all I did basically was just change the connector on one end because if you notice by me pulling this out you'll notice that these uh, fuel pump wiring harnesses have a white and a black cable and this one here as well has a oh my god if I could get it out of the bag because it just got stuck but if you pull it out of the bag you'll notice oh my god it's still stuck but if you pull it out of the bag you guys will notice that uh, it has a white and a black cable so both cables that you get from Parts Geek or wherever you can find them. I bought them from Parts Geek. Both the white uh, end connector and the blue end connector have the same colored uh, wires. So they both basically do the same thing. Uh, the box is basically the same. There's nothing on the boxes except for one line, one line here. So uh, both of them will have a black connector in the end. And then one of them will have a white connector, the other one will have a blue connector. So. If you can't find them, in my case, I uh, couldn't find it. So I was very lucky or very fortunate enough to, when I got it, my mind went quickly to uh, saying, okay, what do I do? How do I fix it? So I just basically removed the white connector because there was a white connector here and a white one here. This one was fine. So I was able to plug this in. The thing I did was remove the white connector off of the new wiring harness. Also removed the blue color connector on the original wiring harness and just put it on the new um, fuel pump wiring harness on the fuel on the new uh, wiring harness and then just plug everything back in so pretty simple uh, just wanted to share it with you guys how I fixed it uh, they're basically you're basically just buying the the same wires the only thing different is, is you're getting one blue connector at the end you can basically do it the way I did is just buy the two white connectors deep pin it put the blue connector back on and you basically got two new fuel pump wiring harnesses and uh, you can't find it you can do it my way but if you do find it do it the way uh, where you can just buy it uh, from them uh, with the connector already there but I've noticed that the white connector uh, with this white con uh, this white color connector at the one end is actually a little bit cheaper than the one that has the blue color connector I don't know why uh, just a little bit uh, more expensive just maybe a maybe a couple of hundred a uh, few dollars more so I think this one was like 120 this is like 132 so it doesn't bother me it didn't bother me anyways the price doesn't bother me but uh, I was able to quickly um, jump into action and fix it so you guys can tell right here it's ripped so I guess this was what was causing the problem and I think these uh, were getting hot as well so just my personal uh, experience on the fuel pump wanted to share my uh, uh, little uh, knowledge on them and uh, what has happened so far so it's just a quick little like uh, short video giving you guys an update and explanation as to what happened and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully you guys uh, learned something and uh, hopefully you guys can uh, do this uh, when whenever you guys run into a fuel pump issue you guys know what to do so hopefully you guys enjoyed what's going on you guys so hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, the fuel pump links have been changed uh, everything's been working been driving the car for a good week now everything's run, running fine the car doesn't shut off especially when it gets up to operating temperature everything's running fine uh, the fuel pumps are kicking in got added adequate fuel pressure at the fuel pressure rail I tested it using a fuel pressure gauge everything's running right I'm pretty happy I fixed it by not having to take the car to the shop 
because uh, I had already fixed whatever was in the tank prior, so there was no need for me to pull the tank again and go through this whole process again. So I wanted to show you guys, I did show you that the fuel pump links were no good, and I showed you guys how I changed the fuel pump uh, connectors at one end because I couldn't find them online. They were actually out of stock, so I had to order two uh, fuel pump wiring harnesses with the white connector on one end and um, just basically dip in one of them to get the blue connector on the new wiring harness so I, I could plug it in and have the car working. So I showed you guys, everything's in, the other ones are right there, I'm gonna throw those out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I'm not gonna show you guys putting the seats in. You guys already seen it through my detailing video of the Jaguar, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. With that being said guys, I'll definitely be catching you guys in the next video.